it's painful coming away from a game and, and feeling like you're behind, uh, particularly since you just spent all these hours there and you, you came with a certain amount of money and with a certain expectation of profit. Mm -hmm. And yet to, to leave down even in one session, let alone over the course of a week or a month. Welcome Poker Life. Next question, Crispin. What is your advice for somebody who is currently on a downswing or feel like they're consistently losing at poker? Okay, well, first of all, downswings are inevitable. Inevitable. There is no run of poker that lasts forever. So if you are going through a downswing, the first thing to realize is that it happens to everybody and it must happen. And there is a variance calculator you can look up online to see how wild those swings can be. That said, it's important also to realize when something is actually a variance downswing and when you're not competitive in a game or uh, the game has changed or something has happened and, and you're just not winning a winning player in that game. Given that 90% plus of players are losing players, there is at least some percentage chance that your downswing is associated with poor decision making. But the good news is the advice I'm going to give you is going to be helpful regardless of whether or not it's a variance downswing or a downswing in terms of you need to improve your play or for things to work on. Mm -hmm. The first bit of advice is not to compound a downswing. I think many poker players, professionals and serious recreational players go completely bust when they're in a downswing not because of the downswing itself, not because of the normal variance, but because that experience causes them to play badly. And that is because human beings don't deal well with pain. Being in a downswing is painful psychologically. It's like being hurt, like having an injury. And the first thing you want to do is get rid of that pain. So if you burn yourself, you go stick your hand in the freezer or something or live running, running under cold water. And that's a good thing uh, for, the, for the burn. But the way in which we deal with pain in poker is often detrimental. Uh, for example, if you are experiencing a downswing, there is nothing you want more than to get even and perhaps jump up in stakes and play a, a game that you're not bankrolled for because you know that if you have one winning session, you can get out of that downswing and be back to where you were when things were level. Uh, there's this kind of gambler's instinct starts to creep in when you're on a downswing. Uh, and that's the first thing to think about. The other thing is not to over-dramatize the downswing. If something is inevitable and beyond your control, it's important not to draw additional patterns on top of it, like think that you're uniquely unlucky. It is possible that you are the unluckiest person in the world, but chances are you aren't that special, okay? There is a, a much higher likelihood that you are just going through normal cycles and because the ebb and flow of those cycles are beyond your control to not start thinking in a negative way as a consequence of recent experiences and then finally just like any other wound it's important to ease yourself on it you don't see people who are baseball players who injure their shoulder go right back onto the plate as the way of healing that wound they have to go away and get actual treatment, do some rehab, build up the strength again before they come out and be competitive. And just like uh, in baseball, in poker, if you are going through a downswing, you should treat that as a kind of injury and therefore work on the basics. Go do your exercises, do your study, review your hands, take some time out away from the felt and really analyze your game. And this is gonna benefit you regardless of whether, as I say, it's just negative variance or you have things to work on because you can't rule that out. You can't rule out the fact that, hey, maybe I could improve because you absolutely can improve. It may not be the cause of your immediate downswing, but there's no harm in actually going away and studying. And you will feel a great sense of confidence if you do review your hands and you study it in depth and use the solvers and do courses and then get affirmation that you're actually just in a normal variance downswing that you have been playing correctly that'll give you confidence in your strategy and you won't make you compound those problems like i mentioned before or it will help you fix the leaks so that you aren't in a downswing anymore either way 
you benefit from taking that time away from the table and actually working on yourself. Now, I'm as guilty of this as anybody else. It's really difficult, for example, to put in a stop loss uh, measure, which is like agreeing before you go to a poker table, if you lose three buy-ins or four buy-ins mm -hmm. or whatever it is, you'll stop because people do want to get back to, to feel like their session was worthwhile. It's painful coming away from a game and, and feeling like you're behind, uh, particularly since you just spent all these hours there and you, you came with a certain amount of money and with a certain expectation of profit. Mm -hmm. And yet to, to leave down, even in one session, let alone over the course of a week or a month or several months, uh, that can be psychologically quite debilitating. And then finally uh, is to make sure that whatever financial losses you do experience, it doesn't undermine your overall quality of life. That is essential. So if you're playing recreationally, that's kind of easier. You just make sure that your uh, earnings and your mm -hmm. expenses and all of that are taken care of and that poker is purely out of discretionary income. But if you're a professional or you're playing out of a like a serious bankroll, then it's very important to uh, reassess and make sure that, okay, if I was to continue with a normal level of variance, would I be able to sustain this with a downswing that's purely beyond my control? And if the answer to that is no, then you should really reevaluate where you're at in poker before you go down the path of making a huge, a huge mistake. But the most important thing is that when you're in a downswing, just be really kind to yourself, go back to that variance calculator and just see that reality and know that what makes you a professional and let's say you're doing this professionally what makes you professional is your ability to understand that inevitable things will happen and to minimize its effect on you you're psychologically often in a difficult place it can be something that people who are non-poker players will find difficult to understand because they'll perceive you perhaps as just a normal gambler someone who's mm -hmm. going through gambling problems you may even start to see yourself that way I'd be like, what am I doing with this? You know, I, I could be doing a, a normal nine to five job. You know, I could be being successful in some other career and yet I'm losing money. There aren't many jobs where you can actually just through normal variants lose money. And so socially, it's going to be difficult for people to understand you, what you're going through. It's going to be difficult for you to understand yourself. We're all human. Mm -hmm. So it will have an effect and recognizing that it has an effect on you and the ways in which you are vulnerable to those effects is something that is a hallmark of maturity to be self-aware about that. If you see our video on the, on the five hallmarks of successful poker players, self-awareness was like number two. Uh, so that is a very uh, critical skill. Mm -hmm. Know that you will be affected by that, but also understand that weathering those storms and having effective strategies for managing it and healing yourself is a critical component to professional play and also will minimize the length and depth of that downswing because every knee-jerk response you have to the downswing is negative. If you wouldn't make the decisions that you make when you're up or you're even that you make when you're losing money, then the high probability is that those decisions are bad decisions, okay? Any decision that you make for any reason other than what is the most optimal EV play in that moment is typically bad. If your motivation is to get out of that downswing rather than as it should always be, which is to make the best possible decision in every decision point you have, then the only thing you can do is exacerbate that downswing. Mm, that makes sense. And I feel like with downswings, it really echoes your point of having to be kind to yourself because... When you're in a downswing, your ego gets revealed <laughs> and the expectations that you have for yourself get revealed. And if if you're consistently trying to play well and it's just not happening, then that can be quite a difficult place to be. And at what point do you tell yourself, I need to take a break from poker, especially if you're a professional? Like, is there a point? Well, I can only speak for myself because this is something where everybody is different and it depends on their own makeup. Personally, I tend to bounce back reasonably quickly, but I do need a break. Okay. Mm. So the break might be as short as a day or two. Okay. It doesn't have to be 
you know, months on end where you just quit poker, you know, in a rage quit and come back. But there needs to be a, a period of time where what has happened in the past feels psychologically separate to the present and future. That is, if you come to a new session and you're like, oh, I'm down thousands of dollars mm. and my goal is to get out of the hole, then you're still carrying that wound with you. But for example, if I'm in a downswing and I've had enough time to kind of forget about the losses that I've already sustained, I'm looking at my bankroll, I'm looking at the stakes, I'm playing the game options, and then I come in relatively fresh and, and mm. I'm looking at it from a, from a blank slate, uh, then that's, that's when I know that I'm ready to play. I remember I had a football slash soccer coach when I was 12 or 13, part of a team. And the coach said something that stuck with me is like, whenever you score a goal, mm. mentally recalibrate as if this was nil all because the score line shouldn't affect how hungry you are to get that precious goal. Okay, You shouldn't think that you can take your foot off the gas because you're three or four goals up. There's nothing more humiliating than to lose when you're three or four goals up, okay? And that absolutely can happen uh, because it's affected your mental state. And likewise, if you're down in score, you shouldn't be thinking, oh, we've got to you know, do these desperate things. We should be focused on, okay, what is the best possible way to advance the ball and get the goal uh, and treat it as if it's nil all and we're, we always seem to play best when we didn't get carried away with those external factors mm. uh, same with poker you should always approach the poker table as if you are in your absolute a game and downswings are just one thing that can affect you in that space not having enough sleep being distracted by life issues that could be affecting you beyond poker uh, to perhaps being too excited, too exhilarated. Perhaps you're on a huge upswing. There's nothing that's going to kill an upswing faster than to start deluding yourself that you have solved poker. The fastest way to get out of a downswing is to review your play, take time away from the table, be kind to yourself, and uh, when you come back to the table, not be thinking about the fact that you're in a downswing. Just treat it like another day, another, another new day, Every moment in poker is a new moment. Every decision tree is completely divorced from every decision that has come and gone in the past or uh, any, anything that came out on the felt beyond your control. The, the only thing that you can do is control what you control, which is your decision making, your mental state, your, your presence at the table. And uh, yeah, if you're in a downswing, sorry to hear that. It, it does happen to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it can really feel like you know, the, the poker gods have it in for you. But just be mindful that the iron law of mathematics always wins out in the end, brutally so. Mm -hmm. And uh, that if you're a winning player, you will be a winning player once again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's the positive thing to think about is the variance goes both ways. You see, negative and positive. <laughs> so. Yeah, and one of the great important talents is to know when you are on a heater uh, or you've made actual material just differences to your play. Uh, but that's another video. Well, I'll bring back to you guys. What do you do when you experience a downswing? Do you do basically what Crystal does or is there something different? Leave your thoughts and comments down below and we'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.